Okay, can you hear me? Michelle, do you have the ability, Costas, to unmute yourself? You don't have to stay unmuted the whole time. I just figured out how to get on. I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be listening while I'm driving, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. No worries. Right so now. There's another Michelle, my offspring, sales director, Michelle. So you can stay on. You can mute yourself. That's totally okay. Um, but Michelle, even if I have everybody muted, you have the ability to unmute yourself and come in. Okay. So I'm going to mute everyone again. Just so that way we don't have the background noise. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. So hello everyone. I am Pink Senior Cadillac Sales Director, Brianna Goodwin, and I wanted to create a new consultant training for people because, you know, we've had a lot of new people come in, um, at least into our unit. I know we have some people who are now in Michelle Costas's unit, who is brand new sales director. Wave so they know which one you are if they're showing the square, if it moves. Okay. You guys can move it too if you're, when you're watching this to do, to switch to active speaker, or you can look where you're looking at everybody's faces as well. Um, and then I know that um, I have some adoptees on here as well who are taking advantage um, of the training too. So I'm excited that we can kind of have everybody hop on here. And then I know we're going to have a lot of people watching the recording as well because they're at work. So my intention with this uh, new consultant training Zoom is to really take you through each week the core pieces of your business. Because we've had such an influx of new people, I really wanted to have it to where you don't get lost in the details and you feel like you have a place where you get to get connected, even if you're not at my training meetings, um, to, to really set up the success for you. If you have not already started on it though, something I would highly, highly, highly suggest is for you on Mary Kay in Touch to go and do Mary Kay University. That is huge. If you have not done it, you can go to it, come back to it. It is really going to break down a lot of the pieces I'm gonna be talking about. The pieces I'm gonna be talking about though are definitely how our unit does things. So Mary Kay is going to show you the Mary Kay way, which is always the best way to do things. We definitely have our own personality and style to things of how I do it. Um, and so it's just going to be a great place for you to kind of pick up the pieces and do that. And the intention with this, honestly, is to take you through these four courses and have you feeling confidence um, to book appointments, um, to be sharing the opportunity with people, and to be able to make income into your family and to your lives and, and why you started this Mary Kay business in the first place. Um, I will be, the documents I use and have in front of me, I will be sending you guys in a follow-up email when we're done with each training. So um, I'm going to do a little bit more explaining on this one and we'll kind of get into the hang of things on the next ones. But once I get the recording link back, if you miss stuff, you had to come in and out, um, you'll get that recorded link where you can watch it again fresh and you'll have all of the documents in one email to be able to find for you as well. So, um, I think I mentioned too, and I don't know where you can do it, you can write comments in this. So if you have questions and you are muted out, there is a place where there is a chat room that you can do that. And so I guess if we see those coming up, um, Michelle Costas, the reason why I wanted you to be able to do that is that you could let me know or we could interject and answer those later. Or you could kind of keep track of that if that's a thing. Okay, um, I think I'm gonna try to switch this over because my thing is to look this way, but my camera is actually over here. So let's see if this dramatically messes this up. Okay, did it. Okay, cool. All right, so we are going to jump in. So I want to first kind of engage you in some of the things going on in our unit and in our team. And I know if you're an adoptee adorable, this, some of these things may not apply to you, but I wanted to just kind of connect you with things because you need to have a goal. If we're going to go into booking and coaching today, I want you guys to have a goal as to why you're doing it. This isn't always the most natural thing that we do is to reach out to people and to ask them to have a makeover or how to, you know, look at doing that. And so the how has to be bigger um, because that, or the why has to be bigger because then the how won't matter when we really go through this. And I, and I'm going to kind of go through, um, today booking. I'm going to go through booking scripts. I'm going to go through how to really carve out the time in your schedule to do that. And if you do these things, um, and the amount of time that you have, what are the ratios that are going to come out of this? What are the numbers that we know how to deal with? So you set yourself up for success and that you know that this is mathematical not magical. Um, so 
couple of events and things that are coming up just to kind of engage yourself in, especially if you're new, to kind of set yourself up for a goal if you don't have a goal um, personally of either that's a source of income or a position that you want to be in. Um, my unit does the Boss Babe Date. And so that means when you do a 600 wholesale order every single month, you are going to be invited to a dinner date with me. Um, and so basically this is the one um, coming up for next month. So if you do a 600 wholesale order in the month of November, you are going to be invited to the melting pot um, with us on Monday, November 5th. So that might just be a goal enough there of like, okay, I'm gonna focus on doing my 30 faces in 30 days. Um, I am going to be focused on placing my first 600 wholesale order, accumulatively even, or first to get my free products from the company, to be able to be invited to this, to be on track with Star Consultant, um, and going through, through those fun things. Um, the next thing that we have also going on, this is a three-month quarterly thing in Mary Kay, is our um, Star Consultant stat party, or being a Star Consultant. So every quarter, Mary Kay does a Star Consultant program. This one started from September 16th till December 15th. So some of you have been in the company for a while, some of you are brand new. What it's basically saying is between those months, accumulatively, if you place an 1800 wholesale order, so it could be multiple 225s or three 600s or whatever that looks like, um, then you will be a star consultant and you get a prize from the company um, and you also get free referrals from the company. So you get to, um, they will basically, if someone is looking in your zip code, they are going to say, hey, you, um, are going to get offered this person who's interested in the opportunity or this person who is wanting to buy product because you know how to service your customers. So um, my unit is doing a special star party, um, the Hawaiian Escape and of course Michelle's. Um, and so this is going to be on January 4th, um, our star party. And again, adoptees connect with me because if you don't have a director who's local to the area of your star party, let me know and we can figure something out for you guys to be a part of this stuff, especially since you're going to be involved in my pink boot camp training and all that stuff. And so I want to make sure to have a place for you guys to be involved in this. So um, what I am doing this time is if you are a base Sapphire star consultant, you are going to get invited. I'm going to be doing a big house or I can't decide yet a big suite hotel room right on the water in San Diego um, that you get invited to and we'll be doing a dinner. If you are a Ruby star, you're going to be able to get dessert and coffee and stay for that. If you are a diamond, you get to stay overnight. Um, so it's going to be me and another Cadillac director that you get to spend the night with us. If you are an emerald, um, you get to, uh, I'm going to buy you a tropical robe because our unit goal this year is to be a circle of excellence unit. And so that means that the director gets to earn a trip to Hawaii. And so everything is kind of formed around Hawaii this year. And then we have our pearl and I'm going to buy a massage for you. So you might look at that too. That might be a goal. You might look at your star consultant tracking on Mary Kay and touch and kind of see, okay, what prize and, oh, I really want to earn this for the party. So how much wholesale left do I need? Times that by two is the amount of sales that I need. And then when we kind of look at that, we can work ourselves backwards of maybe what is your average, you know, amount per face that you sell. So you know how many faces you want to be in front of. So then you know how many people to book. Today, we're gonna to really focus on the beginnings. You might not have anybody yet. You might have not even had your first order yet, but I know some of you have been around and that's why I'm kind of trying to speak to everybody. And so we're gonna talk about the basics of how to start from the beginning of booking that appointment and carving it into your schedule. Again, if the why is big enough, the how doesn't matter. And so I just kind of wanted to, you know, give you some fun, exciting things that you might now want to wrap around your goals this month and work towards. Um, so that way these bookings support that goal. So let's start with some Mary Kay basics. I think to this day, I've been in this company for seven years. Um, and yes, you know, now, you know, I have, I'm in a different place in the company. To this day, I still make a sixth most important list. Okay, so Mary Kay really recommended that you make a six most important list. This is one that I have printed. And if you are not doing that every day, making a list, and there's sometimes gonna be one for your household, and there's gonna be one for your Mary Kay business. 
it's, I think it's best sometimes to make it at night so you can jump out of bed in the morning and you know exactly what you're doing. And let me clarify with this list. It might be like work on bookings. So it's not gonna be like the six things consist of the six people you're contacting. It's gonna be bookings and then these are the people that I'm contacting in the amount of time that I have. Um, the next one might be follow up with people, right? Oh, I was talking to this person and we kind of left with off with conversation. We don't have a date booked yet. Make sure to follow up with so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. This is going to allow us to not let people fall through the cracks. So if you have these lists ready or you have your calendar ready, wherever you keep this list, you can carry people over to each next date. So that way you are prepared with what to do that next day. Um, it also helps you to bring your leads or your initial list of faces wherever you go. So if time is really tight, you can really sprinkle this in, you know, picking up your kids from school. Okay, they're not out yet. I'm going to go ahead and text five people really quick just to get those out. When you are prepared like that, it has it ready to go. Some of these things on the list might be following up with customers that you've had from your parties. Some of it might be following up with potential team members. Some of it might be, um, you know, those are income producing things. There might be some non-income producing things, cleaning your mirrors, um, setting up for your next party, um, you know, doing things like that. And so the best thing I can tell you, because some people say, I don't have six things to put on this list. Like, I don't know what to put. Trust me you will find six things. And so that might look like starting with a brain dump, getting everything out that you gotta do for your household, your husband, your kids, all of that, and everything that you're wanting to do and to create for your Mary Kay business and really figuring out out of those things, what things can be delegated and what are the most important things that you can do. And then through that, make your list daily to insert into your schedule to get it done. So. Mary Kay said, if you don't write it down, you won't remember it. And so make sure to write that down and get in the habit of doing that because that is one of the key, it seems really silly, tiny things that is like such a key to success in this business. Okay, the next thing that is like a huge basic, and I put this in everybody's new consultant packet, is our weekly plan sheet. If you do not have your week planned correctly and you are not carving out the time Mary Kay is not a time management issue. It is a priority management issue. Women will find the time to do things that are important to them. So if we look at our schedule, there's two things that happen with women. We either have so many things that are going on that we feel like we don't have enough time to do our business, or you have so much time that you're like, oh yeah, I don't need to write it down. I don't have anything going on. I can just work it whenever but then it's also not happening. I find that it happens in those two extremes. <laughs> I'm gonna just mute everyone out again. Um, here we go, perfect. Okay, so with that, I know sometimes you see this in your, in, you know, your packet when I give it to you and you're like, what in the heck do I do with that? So I brought an example of one of mine so you can kind of look at it. And I really encourage you this week before we do our next Zoom that you have one of these done. This is going to help you know what you're doing. This is going to help your family. If you have kids, your husband know what you're doing and where you're doing things so they can help you. It's just going to relieve a lot of stress. So my things are color coordinated to subject. This was one I made a long time ago. This isn't a current one, but this was like, I don't know, a couple months ago, April. And so this just kind of shows you if we can get close on here is green is my spiritual life of when I go to my Bible studies and my meetings. That's not when I actually do my like own stuff for that, but that's always every week it is in the schedule. Orange is my son, my pickups, my day I spend with him when I'm taking him to school and what that's looking like. Yellow is for me of working my, my personal business, my office stuff. I'm not necessarily at appointments, but I'm carving out that time that I'm sitting at home, I'm booking, I'm coaching, I'm following up with people. Pink for me is my meeting. Every night I have Tuesday, my success meeting. That is going to go in there weekly. I have the time slots that I have figured out that work best for my schedule that I don't have appointments necessarily for those times, but I'm carving out the time slots of the days that I work to fill people into that. Um, purple is like for me of like personal appointments. T typically that's my therapy or my business coaching or whatever that looks like, doctor's appointments. Um, and then I normally, um, also have 
this is blue right now, but blue would be family time or date night or things like, like that that you could input into this as well. Um, so I would get clear. I would go through everything like, okay, when is my job? Put that in there. When is my weekly meeting? Put that in there. When is the time for my spiritual stuff that I do? Put that in there. When is the time that is like uninterrupted time with my kids? When is the, um, whatever that looks like. When do I do laundry? When do I do grocery shopping? Those things get in the way because we do not account for it. And all of a sudden we're looking and laundry seems more important than sitting down to book people or, you know, cooking or doing the dishes or all the daily things that we do in life are like, we didn't account for that. So we're like, Ooh, I have to get that done first. And so we can go, okay, this is the day I'm going to do all my grocery shopping and like try to account it to that. This is now where we can go in and block out these times that we're going to talk about, whether they're 15 minute increments, whether they're hour increments, where you can spend to your business to reach out and build that consistency so you can book your appointments, coach them to hold, follow up with customers and get your sales, and have time to share the opportunity or reach out to people about it. If you can master and focus on those four things to create a plan for yourself, it is going to create success. If you do it consistently and in a row, if you want to know the secret, super awesome elixir to your business, if you want to know, Brie, how have you earned five free cars? How are you a pink Cadillac sales director? How have you had these really big checks? How have you offspring sales director? I would tell you, I have consistently over the last seven years been in front of 30 faces every single month. It builds upon itself. You will learn so much as you're doing it. You will learn how, when you run out of leads, how to get more. You will learn how to deal with people. You will learn how the compound effect grows itself because these people are now reordering and how it leads you to other people. If you want anything out of your business, bookings is the lifeline of your business. And I would really tell you that while I'm talking today to go through this, that you let it soak in and you let yourself master it because if you can master how to always have appointments on your books, you are always going to be in business. And if you can master how to coach these appointments to hold, it is the insurance that your business continues. Because if you spend all this time trying to find people and you've spent all this time texting them initially and figuring out a date, but we do not take the time that we're gonna go through today to make sure that this appointment is holding or how many people they are bringing and all the steps of connecting and building that relationship for it to hold, that initial part was done for nothing. And so we want to master those two things together. They're like a married couple that works best together. So I encourage you all to make a weekly plan sheet. I would love to see that done. I would love you guys to send me pictures um, because Sometimes as a new consultant, we say we're available whenever. Like, oh, she's available here. I'll just take it. I'll just take it. I need the appointment. I'll take it. And now you're a crazy person because you're running around everywhere to everybody else's schedule. It's not something that you can maintain. Of course, we're going to have goals sometimes. And you're like, oh, well, she's ready right now. I got to finish this goal. Like, of course, that's going to happen. But for sustainability, for longevity, if you can figure out, hey, these two or three days a week are the best times I like to book appointments and these are the daytime and evening I like to offer or this or this, then it's gonna help you to have a system. And trust me, when you create the spaces for that and you can get clear for that, you will fill it. And if those people even, you don't have to book people right away. You can book people weeks out, months out. If they cannot figure out at some point how to insert themselves in the time that works for you, we can move on to another person. Not everything is relying on one person who needs this one random crazy time slot that like would totally jack up our entire lives and schedule that we're frustrated about, right? So we want to do something that works for us, but it seems like it works for them. So let's start with some ratios, with some numbers, because it's a numbers game, right? Let's know how many people we need to contact if we spend a certain amount of time booking, what can come out of that? Um, and get kind of clear on that. Okay, 
biggest Mary Kay number that you will ever hear. And I think it's even different now because of technology and sorry if you're on here and you're millennial. I'm technically a millennial because I can say whatever I want about millennials, but I just, you know, it is, it's a thing now. So it used to be that half of all your appointments will not hold half. I think it's almost two thirds now because people through texting, are, it's a lot easier to say, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot I can't make it or whatever. So I would prepare for that. I would say if your goal is, and if you're really wanting to move and groove in the business, I'm gonna go on higher numbers with things and then work myself down lower. If you're like, I want the ultimate success in Mary Kay, I would say you need to have 10 appointments on your books at all times. That doesn't mean it has to be this week or this month. That could be between this month and next month and whatever that looks like. But maintaining always, as you hold one, you're wanting to replace one. If you're wanting to hold 10 in a month, you need to have 20 on your books because half of those are going to cancel. Maybe even more. You know, I always tell people, it's like you're shooting for this big goal. And if you can like definitely um, extend that out of making sure you're going to hit the bullseye. So like, if you say I have 25 appointments booked and I know some of that is shooting you out of the water. And again, I'm going on highest ones here. Of like, if you're like, Hey, I want to earn a free car. I want to really make some good income. If you have 25 booked, I guarantee you that probably only eight to 10 of those are going to hold only eight to 10. And Michelle Costas, if you can see her face right now, she's shaking her head. Yes, <laughs> because she's a master booker. You guys, she is a master booker and she has experienced of doing just enough. Oh, I have the enough of exactly what I think. And then being frustrated because then she's like, I had hit a goal. I, I, I said, I wanted to do this goal, but now I don't have enough faces to be in front of because they canceled on me and now I don't have enough time to book more. So front load yourself for success. Book them at the same time. Book them at the same time, have them all come to you or book them at the same time and have them come to your success meeting of whenever your success meeting is, if you're concerned. And that way you have three parties coming at a time to an event or to a guest event or to your Tuesday night success meeting or whatever that is. And if two of them cancel, you still have one that hold and it's okay because that place can hold them all. And if they all come, oh, well, that's awesome. I will be there to help you. Michelle will be there to help you. Whatever director will be there to help you, right? So just be smart with your time. Work smart, not hard. All right, so let's go. That's number one ratio is half will we'll cancel. All right, so I'm going to be sending you guys in your follow-up email some homework. And it is a um, link to the four-hour plan. And this is genius, you guys. National Sales Director Tammy Craig made this amazing four-hour plan her brain is brilliant and she really works through, if you had four hours in a day to commit to your business, what would come out of it? Now, some of you do not have four hours a day. So I don't want you to all of a sudden now just tune me out and say, girl, I told you I am part-time. I'm just trying to learn some stuff. I do not have four hours a day. That is so okay. Whatever I'm going to talk about in this, you take that hour of whatever we're talking about and you jump into only a half hour or you jump into only 15 minutes. If you're at least finding and carving out those times and those areas to do that stuff, you will create the consistency or the success for you that is appropriate, right? Because this business is designed for you and I'm just trying to put out what the best option or scenario could be. So in that, you're going to be getting this worksheet from me. So I'm going to be sending you a link to listen to because I just really think, you know, Language goes away and we hear something once and you're going to hear me say it today, but then you're going to hear her say it, it sounded way better coming from her because she's an amazing, brilliant national. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, Brie, I listened to the Tammy Craig and she's awesome. And I'm like, hello, I said it to you on the Zoom. And you're like, but she said it and it made sense to me. So that's why you continue to show up to events or trainings because things click when they click right? And so that's why I'm just giving it to you so you can get it from all areas. So this is a sheet though that goes through and writes down basically what she, what she says. So we're going to go through the booking and the coaching segments of it today, but it starts out here. It says, would you like to be able to flip the Mary Kay switch off at times and feel good about it? The four hour plan is the answer. 
that is the main thing that people ask me. When you work for yourself, are you always on? Are you always working? I mean, I do love what I do. So I am on a lot because I just actually love it and I enjoy it. But like, how do you turn it off? How do you know that you are say today, hey, I did everything I need to do for my Mary Kay business. I am done for today. I did what I needed to do. Now it's time for family. Now it's time for my job. This is how you're gonna do it. So it says first, how much time can you devote to your business? Goes back to that weekly plan sheet, right? Really seeing where you can carve out the times, really seeing what works for you and your family. Getting clear on that, keeping your blinders on. Don't worry about what the consultant in this group next to you can do or what you can do. Get clear. How many hours per week are you willing, not want to, willing to commit to your business? Full-time, six to eight hours. Part-time, four hours. Have a full-time job, cut it to two hours. Okay, adjust the plan to fit to your needs. Fill in the gap between knowing what you do and doing it. All right, so the first hour, so we're gonna now go into the booking session of this. What are the booking ratios and what could come out of it? I believe if you are dealing with your list of brand new people with skin, you are brand new, you just started the company, you made a list of everyone you know with skin, you wrote it down, keyword, it is not in your brain, it is on a piece of paper, you wrote it down. Um, you might have categories of who these people are, they might be out of state, they might be here, they might be from different areas of your life. You might have been seasoned and still here and you're like, I'm through everybody, I need you to find that list. Because I guarantee, I guarantee this is about to sound serious. I'm a very dramatic person. So like, we're gonna get to know Brie really well on this first one. I would bet my kid's life on the fact that if you went back to that list, you have people who are willing to still book with you, who have fallen through the cracks, who you still have faces. I have met people six months down the road from that list. I've met people a year down the road from that list who I've been able to take back to that list and still work from it. But this is the time where we got to get out of our own head and we got to stop prejudging. We got to stop worrying how many times we text them and we've got to just work on that follow up. So I would say the people that you know, one out of every five to six are going to book with you. That's what I would say. One out of every five to six are going to book with you. What does that mean? Every five to six people that I message will say yes. So how many yeses do I want? We'll do the math. I would say one out of every 10 people that you don't know, referrals, potentially leads from Facebook, things from events, vendor events, one out of 10, maybe even a little bit more, but I would say one out of 10 if your follow-up is crisp are gonna say yes. So write those numbers down, be clear. Because if you say to me, Brie, I messaged 10 people this week, no, nobody's booking. It's not working. No, nobody, nobody said yes. I'm going to say, oh my gosh, girl, this makes so much sense. Nothing's wrong with you. You only messaged 10 people. So you only gave the opportunity of one to say yes, but guess what? Sometimes you message 10 crickets. You message the 11th or the 12th. Those are your yeses. So it's that consistency to keep going. Sometimes it's 18 and 19 and 20 say yes. So we have to let the numbers play out and we can't just go, I did 10 today. It's keeping that consistency and that flow going. So those would be the ratios of who I think, um, how they respond. So what this four hour plan says with booking, if I had an hour, and honestly, right now, if you are brand new, your entire four hour plan really is just gonna be focused on booking right now because you don't really have people to do the other things with. So what she talks about in this recording is if you are brand new or you don't have any bookings on the books right now or anything, you're going to take more of this time in this four hour plan into just the booking part of it, right? And the time fluctuates through that. So I'll have you listen to her on that. Let's say you had the full hour though um, and you in an hour could get two bookings. If you spent an hour every day messaging people and connecting with people, you could get two bookings an hour. That would be, if you got two bookings every day, that would be 10 a week, 10 a week. If you had 10 a week times four weeks of the month, 
that would be 40 parties in a month. You guys, this is just from spending one hour a day of intentional activity, of doing an income producing activity, of focusing on the bookings. Let's say you're like 40 parties, Brie. I told you I only wanted to do one a month. You're crazy. Okay, of course, right? So we went in that beginning part, chunk it down, right? But what we're talking about is the compound effect. An hour a day could get you that many bookings if I just stayed consistent every day or every day I took 10 to 15 minutes to message at least five to 10 people I personally think the minimum per day is 10 people to message. If you, and, and, and it takes to message 10 people, you guys, honestly, I would say a minute per text, if that. So it takes you 10 minutes. So if you're on that lower scale there, it takes you 10 minutes to message 10 people, you're done, right? And we're already responding to people on our phone all day anyways, in through and out life. So we can respond to them later. So even just carving out that 15 minutes. So in an hour, we could message probably 30 to 60 people. And trust me, you'll get to that point where you have all these referrals or you have the bookings from your bookings of you're like, where in the heck do I get these people, right? So let's just go back to these ratios. So you took an hour a day, you got two bookings in that hour, and that would be 10 a week. You did 10 every week, that would be 40 parties. If only half held, that would be 20 classes. That doesn't mean all that month. That could be over a course of two months, right? If you had 20 classes that you sold a minimum of $200 per class, a minimum. I say the average sales per class is honestly $300. Natalie on here did a party of three the other day and sold $1,000. So like we're going low on the scale of, of that just to be safe, right? Just to be safe. And you might have a party that sells zero. So that's why these ratios kind of even themselves out. So if you sold $200 every party and you had 20 appointments, that would be $4,000 in sales. $4,000. Half of that is yours and half of that is to order the product. So your so I want you to really think about this. An hour a day could get me an extra $2,000 a month. Of course, that doesn't include the party times. What does your job do for you right now of how much it's paying you? How many hours does it take? I don't know. I get pretty excited about that, right? That's just sales. That doesn't include these people reordering in the future. That doesn't include team members. That doesn't include any of that. That is just like new appointments. I, I don't know, I could get excited about that. So, so there's that. Okay, so how do we book these people, right? <coughs> so we had our schedule, we know when we're gonna work it, right? We're gonna make our weekly plan sheet. I'm gonna pretend you're brand new because you are constantly, I still, to this day, Pink Cadillac Sales Director, seven years in, have a 30 faces in 30 days challenge. You never grow out of it. Get excited. My senior sales director, who has earned nine free cars, has been in the company for that long, still has a challenge, 30 faces, 30 days. They don't know how long we've been in. They don't know what's going on. Every woman likes to be a part of a challenge. Um, because they will not take time for themselves, but they will take time to be one of your faces for your 30. It is just pure Mary Kay script. So even if you are three months in, it does not matter. You are still brand new. All right. So some of you might have a um, party already booked, maybe your first party booked. Some of you might have held appointments and you're like, okay, what do I do now? I got my first party out of the way. Some of you are seasoned um, and on here and kind of getting a recap. And so I'm gonna do this from a brand new consultant's perspective. And if you are above and beyond that, you will know how to shift it for your needs. Does that sound okay? Okay. I love that Michelle is on here, Michelle Costas, because I'm actually staring at your face the entire time, like I'm just talking to you. If anyone doesn't know, Michelle is my offspring sales director and like, we have just totally in the last four years built our business together. So I just feel like I'm like talking to her in a private room and it's really funny. Okay. <laughs> she's laughing and she's muted. Okay. So, um, before I go on to bookings, Michelle, by the way, do you have anything to add to anything I said or anything you want to say about anything? She's unmuting. 
No? Or are you thinking? Okay. Um, I just think that, like you were, I think it was really important what you said that that is like, as a new consultant, that's really all you need to be focusing on. Um, because the product will get organized. It'll get labeled at some point. All the, you know, creating a Facebook group all that stuff, that's eventually going to happen. And I think that it's just really important to start by focusing on getting minimum your first eight appointments. Even if you're doing part-time, getting those first eight appointments on your books. I try, I mean, I know we're like talking to new people here, but if you want to earn a car or become a director, I would say um, keeping eight to 10 appointments in the next two weeks would set you up for strength. Um, but just always having, like you said, having those 10 bookings on your, on your books is like, I mean, that's it. If you don't have 10 bookings on your books right now and you want to make Mary Kay really successful, that is the only thing you need to focus on right now. That's it. Okay. Can you talk about what your experience was too of, of kind of picking back off of, off of you of like being a brand new consultant and the importance of the power start and what's going to really happen in that and the 30 faces and what it did for you and that on the job training and all that. Yeah. So your first 30 faces is really on the job training. So I wouldn't get super attached to what your results are. I would stay connected with your director and we can kind of look at what's happening for you and kind of maybe help you tweak it so you're getting better results. But your first 30 faces, if you just let your friends and family know you're just practicing and learning, then you don't have to feel um, a lot of pressure. I think that the if you do 30 faces three times in a row, like 30 faces plus, you will be in a dramatically different place. Um, the first time you do 30 faces, you're going to be like, well, you know, I got this amount of sales and I got this amount of team members, but I, I practiced and I got my 30 faces. That's awesome. My results aren't exactly what I hope they would be. And that's normal. You really have to do it that next 30 faces. Okay. So you do 30 faces in a month. And then the second month, things will start to show up a little bit. And then that third month of 30 faces is like pure momentum. And you're going to even be getting results back from the first 30 faces. So um, it's just a lot of Mary Kay is working in faith and not stopping until the miracle happens. When you do those 30 faces three times, you'll be in a dramatically different place if that's what you're looking for. Yeah. And whatever you do now in your business, you guys shows up in three months from now. And so you have to allow that momentum to show up. I, I mean, I just watched this firsthand with Michelle. She literally just became a director five days ago, you know, in the top 2% of Mary Kay. Can you believe that just happened? Um, and, um, and you know, when we look back of what was going on, we can pinpoint of how many faces she was in front of consistently that then brought her to a place of this strength of a team of DIQ. And then from there doing it again of those next three months and debuting with a unit of over 40 women. And I know, again, we're talking about really big numbers here with brand new consultants, but I'm just trying to show you that like firsthand through multiple people, I have seen that happen. And so if you're like, okay, tell me what to focus on as a brand new consultant, literally nothing else than obsessing about being in front of your first 30 faces. And if you are not a new consultant and you're kind of in a slump and you're like kind of wondering like what is going on, I would ask yourself, when is the last time you have seen 30 faces in 30 days? And even if you just did it, go do it again, go do it again. Um, because it will totally, like she just said, show up for you and to have faith. The three things in sales that you've got to pay attention to is money management because people in sales don't really know how to manage their money. Having faith before you see the results and consistency. If you can master those three things, consistently seeing the faces, faith that even if you walked away with no sale or no team member or saw those faces and you didn't get exactly what you thought you would be, that you know that if you continue to do it, it is going to come through and the money management, making sure you're doing your proper split, which we'll talk about in week four or, you know, managing it right because we are commission based, you will be uber duper successful. So 
Thank you, Michelle, for totally jumping in on that because I think it's good to hear it from two different perspectives and voices. Um, and, and that's really awesome. So we're gonna pretend like you're a brand new person and I'm gonna kind of go through again the, the science of this script with you guys because I know that sometimes you come in and you're brand new and you're like, mm -hmm, cute script, Mary Kay lady, but I'm changing it because you're crazy and I'm not sending that out. And then I get these messages and they're like, yeah, I'm getting no yeses and I'm like, okay, show me what you put. And I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what happened? And I'm being serious about it because I want you to be successful. I don't want you to like have this belief system of that you're not gonna be successful because you decided to change the script of what's been working at Mary Kay for 55 years and then wonder why in the heck is it not happening for me? I am a very strong independent personality type. I do not like to be told what to do. I like to be creative. I like freedom and flexibility. I will say something I attribute a lot of my success to in this business is I put all that aside and I was humbly coachable with my director. And I said, you know what? She is in the position she is for a reason. And I'm going to listen to everything she tells me to do. Even be that person to do everything we tell you to do just to prove us wrong. I can't tell you how many nationals said, I didn't believe her. I didn't believe her. So I went and did it and then it happened. And I thought I was going to prove it wrong, but it happened. And so let's go over the science of the script because I want to stay in an hour time frame with this and we still have to go over coaching, but we'll see how that happens. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot in here though. So I might actually turn this in a four week class to a five or six week class because I was actually dreaming about it last night. And I was like, we need a whole class on just how to close people and that is not in here and we need a class on like on all these other things so this might get extended so get excited okay um do you agree michelle like yeah i don't know what to do okay so um so let's see here so when we're reaching out to someone hi friend's name guess what i just started my own business teaching skincare with mary kate because insert dream and i have a huge goal so why do we say teaching women shut down when they say that we sell Mary Kay, you're brand new. You, you're going to walk up to people and say, Oh, hi, I sell Mary Kay. She just literally eyes rolled in the back of her head. She, you lost her, right? Because we are taught to say no to things that are being sold. And so we, when we say teaching women are kind of intrigued and they're interested. I'm going through this with you because I want you to understand why the words in this work. So you, you do it, you know, um, insert dream make this authentic to you. Say, I just started my Mary Kay business because I'm planning my wedding right now. I have a lot of people planning their weddings and I want to have the beautiful dream wedding, you know, of my life. <laughs> yes. Natalie is planning her wedding. Jesse is planning her wedding. I know that, um, <laughs> yeah, look at her. She just got engaged. She's so excited. Um, and we have Heather who's planning her wedding and we have, we have so many people, just even three of you on here right now, currently planning your wedding. So, um, and people are excited about that, right? So let me tell you how you wouldn't do it. You came into Mary Kay because you have a lot of debt. So you're like, I, I'm teaching skincare with Mary Kay because I want to pay off my credit card bills. We know that's what you're doing, but you're not going to tell Susie that, okay? It doesn't come across right. So um, because I have a dream to blank, you know, come up with something, something that you want to take your family on or something that you're doing. And if you have a hard time coming up with that, reach out to me so you can say, Hey, this is my goal. Why I'm doing this. How do I put this into like words to reach out to, to people? I have a huge goal. <clears throat> my director has challenged me to give 30 complimentary beauty treatments in 30 days. Is there any reason I couldn't borrow your face to come to my first beauty experience night on date and time? I promise to give it back. If it is not on your first party date, you don't have a party date set and you're just reaching out to people individually, is there any reason I can't borrow your face? So that is what you are going to copy and paste and message out to everybody, okay? So let's pretend this isn't for your first party because that's gonna be a little different. The date is already set. <coughs> I know if you've done any consultant training with me, I've already told you this, but I like to repeat it. Three things are gonna happen when you reach out to people. Um, 
first thing is you are going to, they're going to say yes, they're going to come, they're going to be easy peasy, we love them. The second thing that's going to happen is they're going to say yes, but the date that you are potentially asking them for your first party doesn't work. So you're going to want to go into booking them for another date and time immediately while it is warm, while it is hot, not going, okay, well, I'll let you know when I'm having my next thing because we've kind of lost them. We want to take advantage while we have them in that conversation. The second thing that's going to happen in there is that we're going back and forth on a date. So there's going to be a lot of back and forth that's going on. It sometimes takes days of going back and forth. Be prepared for that. And so that way you kind of know to be prepared for that. The third thing is crickets. Nothing. Are they my friend? Are they my mom? I thought she birthed me. What happened? My mom isn't even responding to me. That's dramatic. But that's going to happen that people do not just respond to you. And so we have all responses for all things. So say we're just reaching out to someone to borrow their face. So they say, yes. Then we say, great, thank you so much. I really help, appreciate you helping me get close to my goal. We're thanking them. We're re, you know, affirming them, subconsciously making them feel guilty if they ever thought about canceling on us. So appreciative, okay? <laughs> and then we go into a question. We wanna keep it simple, two options. What do we not do? Great, what works for you? This is what happens. This girl sends you every date and time that does not work for you in your schedule. And then you're like scrambling, thinking you need to make one of those dates and times work for you. Um, control what you can control. Write that down. And Mary Kay, we control what we can control. So we are con controlling the scheduling in a way that so seems like we are doing what is in the best interest of them. Control what you can control. Control the follow-up. They will not get back to you. You will be the one to follow up with them. Even if they say they're going to get back to you, they will not nine times out of 10 because their child is throwing up on them. Something's going on with work. Some family emergency is going on and you are, are not at the top of their list. And you're over here, 30 faces, 30 days. Susie said she'd follow up with me. Susie's not. Okay. You are going to follow up with Susie and just know that, just know that. So, um, okay. So we're going to say what typically works best for you a weekday or a weekend two options. That's it. Okay. Let them respond. Okay, great. A weekend works best for you. All right. Are you thinking daytime or evening works best? Um, or you might be looking at your availability and some of those you're like, it's a weekday. I only have nights available. So that's all I'm going to offer because I work during the day. Right. So just adjust it accordingly. So what my goal is, <coughs> As you have now narrowed down a weekday or weekend, a daytime or evening, and you are going to look into your schedule and offer the two best dates that work for you and give her those options. So now we have that set. Once we have a date confirmed, let's confirm location. So I restate all of this. I am so excited to see you on date and time. I re-put that all in the same text because sometimes there is a lot of going back and forth on dates and sometimes there's miscommunication. And so we want to be very clear. I, um, this is what it says. I live in blank city. Would you prefer to come to me or for me to come to you? So we're giving the two options, coming to me or coming to you. If you do not want them coming to you, you do not give them that option, right? Um, then you might be giving dates and times available of the meetings that we have and events that we have or going to them instead. Um, so once I have a date, time and location set in stone, then I'm going to talk to them about making it a party. But I don't actually ever say the words party with them. I'm not like, do you wanna book a party? It's overwhelming. They think they have to clean their whole house. They have this whole stigma around party. So I like to really just stick it to, since my goal is so big of wrapping up my 30 faces and 30 faces challenge, you can actually have up to five, six, seven, how many you feel comfortable. People join you for your beauty session. Um, you're gonna have some opportunity to win some free product from me. Who would you like to invite? Not do you want to. Do you want to says, ah, no, oh, yes. Who makes their brain start thinking of who they're going to invite to this appointment? Um, so then they might say, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to get back to you. And I say, okay, great. So what I'm gonna do is check in with you on date and time and see if you have an idea of who's going to be joining you. That is typically 24 to 40 hours out of this conversation. I'm controlling what I can control already 
basically setting up the permission and the guidelines of when I am following up with them next to get their guest list so that they have a date, they have a deadline that they need to start reaching out to people and asking. Sometimes I even go a step ahead and I give people a script to help them to invite their friends because I have seen some pretty crazy things that they have asked like when I let a hostess go ask her people of like how she invites them. Hey, this Mary Kay chick, she wants to like have a party. So like, do you want to come or what? <laughs> it's actually insanity. So I do have scripts for that of how you could set her up for success and coach her. And guess what? If she starts doing these things and she is listening and following and playing ball with you, she's basically doing your job and she's probably your next team member if she can do all of that, right? So, so we do that. So that is kind of where are we at with time. So that is kind of where we're at with getting them booked, kind of setting up with their guest list. The next important thing, and again, we're going to have to go over coaching in another um, Zoom. Um, <laughs> another Zoom, another time. But I'm going to send you this so you have it. Once I have someone booked, <coughs> I immediately put them on this party coaching sheet. This is going to help your brain know exactly where you left off with everything with them. So you can put their name, their email, their address, their date, their time. You can put their entire guest list. Here, instead of really putting their information, I'm putting their skin type with the pre-profiling questions I asked them. Down here, it kind of helps you with all the things to do before and after and during the party of a checklist. So that is gonna go out in a PDF to you guys so you can utilize that as you book your appointments. Because what's great is I have a booking binder and so every time I book an appointment, I put it in there in chronological order. And so then it allows me to know exactly where I left off with each of these. So when I am working on my coaching hour of the day, I can go into that book and go, oh, I need her guest list. Oh, I need to ask her some questions about her skin. Oh, I need to connect with her and remind her. Oh, um, I need to let her know that I want to come early to the party to set up. Again, all those things are in coaching. So it really helps you. So then when you close your booking binder, you're done. You know, you've done everything you need to do and you don't have to keep it all up in here. Women, we think that we can keep everything in our brain and details start missing. So do yourself a favor and just keep it on a tracking sheet because then you can be present when you need to be off of your Mary Kay business and you know where to exactly pick things up where you left off. So um, I do um, set them up with questions to ask about their skin. I will quickly go through that. Um, you can either text them the questions. So what I like to do is I like to see how many people they want to invite. Then I either try to get the names and numbers from them, or I at least like to get the names. And then um, I have personally made a Google form document with the names of a link that they can do to fill out. If you do not want to do that, you can try to get the names and the numbers and then send them out each text introducing yourself and asking them questions about their skin. The questions that I typically ask, no matter the way you do this, whether you email them, whether you make this link one day, or you just text them, are these questions. Number one, wow, how would you describe your skin type? Normal, dry, oily, or combination? How would you describe your skin tone? Ivory, beige, or bronze? If you could change one thing about your skin, what would it be? This is gonna help you to give keywords during your party. People say, I want the skin texture different. I don't want my blackheads. I don't wanna be less oily. And so I will kind of drop those words or come prepared with samples to my party or already kind of know their skin of what to put in their tray for when I show up. Another question I ask is their age range. So I actually give an age range question. I don't ask how old they are. And I'm like, I say, what is your age range? Um, 18 to 20, 20 to 30, or in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s plus. This is gonna help me with what skincare line is best for them. It also weeds out if you get a funky referral sheet with a bunch of people under the age of 18. Um, so you're not dealing with going to these people's homes and it's a bunch of underage people that can't even buy anything anyways. The skin tone question is extremely important. With people you know, you might not be asking that question right away because you already know what they look like but I want to be prepared with the right foundation colors to bring to their appointment so I don't look crazy. Um, <clears throat> so those are some of the questions that you're gonna ask. So if you do have a first party set up and you already have them booked, I would say, hey, I wanted to actually check in with you. I have a couple questions to ask you about your skin so I have everything ready um, for your appointment time and for those who are joining you. 
Um, and so that will help you to have another connection, another reminder, um, looking professional. A lot of the times, yes, these questions are helpful, but a lot of the time it's just another excuse for me to connect with them, to keep myself in the forefront of their mind so that booking holds. Um, so that is a tiny bit, a tiny bit about coaching. But again, what we will do next week is go, we will start with the coaching process of how to really coach that appointment to hold. And we're also going to go into the flip chart in the skincare class um, and how to really go through all of it and how to talk about the products and what order to do things in um, and everything like that. So is there anyone on here as we have three minutes to wrap up, is there anyone who has any questions that they want to ask me? Um, anything they need clarification on? Any golden nuggets that you potentially learned or want to add into what you're doing? If you don't, it's okay. I just wanna give you the opportunity. And if you, you do, you might have to mute yourself out and you can also know too that you can always touch base with me after these and clarify and, and kind of talk to me. And I want you to know too that you can always snapshot texts to me or Michelle and say, hey, this is what this person said. This is where I'm at with the booking process. What am I missing? What could I enhance? Where would I take it from here? How would I follow up? Don't feel like you're bothering us. This is super important because there is an art to how you talk to people with this and the follow-up and ways that work. And I would rather set you up from success and go through all the minor details now so you are like a booking master than be frustrated and go, eh, it's not working, I'm over it, right? So I hope some of that was helpful for you guys. I hope you're excited to know that if you really committed an hour of your business every day to just hold bookings and you really wanted to make this your main source of income, how an hour could make you $2,000 a month a day pretty exciting. Um, I really want you guys to focus on making your week weekly plan sheet. This will make all the difference in your business and really getting into the habit of making your six list and writing down a goal, getting clear on the top of your weekly plan sheet or on the top of your six list or on the top of your calendar. What is your goal this month as we go through this new consultant training? Is it to hold your first party? Is it to see your first 30 faces in 30 days? Is it to be a boss babe and do your 600 wholesale order? Is it to be a star consultant? Is it to make a certain amount of income? Is it to be somewhere on the career path? A lot of these things connect together. Whatever one gets you excited, whichever one I just said that you're like, that one, write it down. Because from one thing, all the other things can come from. If we're focused on all these other things, it gets a little bit overwhelming. What I would love is for you to reach out to me and say, hey, Brie, this is my goal this month. What is going to be the best plan of action for me to make that happen with my schedule and with my time so I can help and support you to have the ultimate success this month? So I'm so excited for you guys. Um, my intention is that through this group, you guys are getting in front of the faces, holding your first parties, getting your on-the-job training, having wins and just a lot of momentum from it. So I'm glad we got to connect. I hope you guys have an awesome Monday. I will see some of you guys at Boss Babe tonight. I hope a lot of you will be there with our Boss Babe in December. And as soon as this recording gets me a link, I will be sending out the follow-up email with the documents that we used today. All right, you guys, I will see you next Monday at 12. Thanks for hopping on. Have a good day. Bye. How do I stop?